ओके गाइज वी आर टॉकिंग अबाउट द प्रो यू कैरियोटिक ट्रांसलेशन एंड वी हैव ऑलरेडी टॉक्ट अबाउट यू कैरियोटिक ट्रांसलेशन इनिशिएशन फेज नाउ वी नीड टू सी द यू कैरियोटिक ट्रांसलेशन इलांगेशन एंड वी आर एक्चुअली मेकिंग द कंपैरिजन बिटवीन द यू कैरियोटिक ट्रांसलेशन एंड प्रो कैरियोटिक ट्रांसलेशन एंड वी नो दैट द यू कैरियोटिक ट्रांसलेशन इज ए काइंड ऑफ वेरी मच सिमिलर टू दैट ऑफ प्रो कैरियोटिक ट्रांसलेशन द ओनली मेजर डिफरेंस टेक्स प्लेस इन द ड्यूरिंग द इनिशिएशन फेज व्हिच वी हैव ऑलरेडी सीन now the elongation phase for eukaryotic translation is kind of similar with the prokaryotic translation but it it also have some differences so we are going to see some of those differences for example uh, let's find out what is going on actually how this elongation takes place now the elongation phase for the eukaryotic translation we can uh, further divide it into two part one is the peptide bond formation so peptide bond formation this is the first stage and the second stage remember the second stage is the translocation translocation of the ribosomal subunit one codon means three nucleotides from 5 prime to 3 prime so these are the two different stages of eukaryotic translation elongation and if we see here the first stage of uh, the elongation process of uh, how uh, this peptide peptide bond formation is very common uh, to that of the prokaryotic elongation so you can just watch the video properly the thing is uh, we know that 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 in that in the actually in the ribosome if i if i draw the large subunit and small subunit there are three different uh, grooves uh one is the e side then p side then a side now the idea here is always looks like the same that is uh we have one trna placed at this a side and we have also another trna placed at this p side let's say okay so the idea of this peptide bond formation is that whatever trna present at p side will transfer this amino acid to that of the a side the the trna present at the a side so the amino acid the peptide bond will form between these two amino acid and actually after that what we'll see now is that this amino acid this green color will be now paired with and attached with this blue colored amino acid with the help of peptide bond and as a result this amino this trna that is present in the p side will become uncharged and then they will move to the e side and they'll exit from the p side okay so that is how the process of peptidyl transfer is occurs and that thing is catalyzed by the large subunit that is catalyzed by the r rna that is present there in the large subunit but the second stage which is the translocation is very important now in this uh, in this actually slide what we are going to see is that how they bring uh, those uh, each each of this uh, trna charged trna so don't look at all these things for right now don't look at all these things here just look from here the actual enzyme that we require for that the actual protein factor that we require is the long initiation uh, i mean elongation factor elongation factor 1a right so this is the elongation factor so if you look at here this elongation factor is also a gtpas so it is attached to the gtp and then this elongation factor 1a will be attached to the amino acyl trna which is also called as the charged remember it is called as charged trna so this elongation factor 1a will be attached to the charged trna and it will bring this charged trna to the a site of the ribosome okay it will bring it to the a site of the ribosome once it brings there the gtp will hydrolyze into gdp right and then this ef 1a will release that's how you can see it here now now you need to look at here because once this ef 1a release with gdp remember we need to recycle this protein again and again right so we need to replace this gdp with gtp and thus for this replacement we need a complex of e elongation factor 1b proteins elongation factor 1 b d and g so completely elongation factor b d and g will help in the replacement and substitution of gdp with gtp for the elongation factor 1a and once that is done then again this gtp containing elongation factor 1a will repeat this process again and again so this elongation factor 1a is required to bring the charged trna and bind it to the a site so that is the stage of bringing it now the second stage is the peptidyl transferase reaction that i have already talked 
Peptidyl transferase reaction is catalyzed by the large subunit of the ribosome. In fact, the ribosomal RNA that is present in the large subunit will help in the catalysis of this reaction. After that, what will happen? Whatever chain of peptide is present will be transferred to the to the amino acid sequence that is present in the A site tRNA. Each time a new tRNA will brought something, the rest of the other polypeptide chain will be transferred to the new, TR, new tRNA, the new amino acid sequence of the tRNA. And that's how the complex start to grow and grow. So if you look at here, this was the first, t first amino acid that was placed, then every new amino acid will be placed on bottom of that. That's a huge concept to remember actually. So once this process is done, then the second stage is the translocation. So if I tell you the translocation image, uh, the translocation process here is very much similar than that of uh, the translocation in prokaryotes because in uh, this case also there are some factors which will bind and help these ribosomal subunits to slide along one nucleotide, uh, three nucleotides or one codon from 5 prime to 3 prime, right? Because three nucleotide sequences acts as, you know, a triplet. This triplet acts as a codon, right? And that codes for one amino acid. So that's, re that's the reason that each time they need to have translocation, they need to shift this ribosomal subunit one codon forward from 5' prime to 3'. Prime. That's the elongation phase. Now, uh, now this is an interesting fact about the eukaryotic translation, is that the eukaryotic translation takes place uh, the process called co-translational translocation. But the thing is in eukaryotes we have compartmentalization, we have different organelle system. So for delivery of a protein to its destined organelle, we need to add them, we need to modify them. And for that we need to actually fold them properly. So for in eukaryotes actually uh, if we need to completely synthesize a protein, then uh, do all this stuff, it will take a long time. To, to minimize that time consumption, what we do actually in eukaryotic cell actually is that let's say this is the endoplasmic reticulum and you probably heard the term rough endoplasmic reticulum. Why they called rough? Because you see small amount of ribosome attached to that endoplasmic reticulum. So the question is why ribosomes are attached to the endoplasmic reticulum? And the answer is they are effectively producing proteins. And why they are attached to the endoplasmic reticulum surface? The answer is that in this image. The thing is, the, as they are producing the polypeptide chain, they are inserting that polypeptide chain inside the endoplasmic reticulum lumen or ER lumen. So as you can see here, this is the ribosomal subunit, this is the mRNA and they start producing the proteins. Now as they start producing the polypeptide, remember, if I go back here as they start producing the polypeptide, the first 20 to 30 polypeptide sequence, the first 20 to 30 amino acid sequences, they act as a signal sequence. Remember, they act as a signal sequence as you can see it here. At the very beginning, they call the signal sequence. It can be from 10 to 20 or to 25 nucleotide long uh, amino acid long sequences. Now, this sequence is signaling what? Because this signal sequence will attract a protein called signal sequence receptor protein or signal recognition protein or SRP. So this SRP will recognize the signal and then it will bind with a protein channel that is called the SRP receptor found adjacent to the endoplasmic reticulum translocon channel. So this is the translocal channel which is giving the room for moving something from outside the cytosol inside the ER lumen or from ER lumen to the cytosol. So this channel is adjacent to the SRP receptor which is also fixed in the membrane. But now this SRP once bound with the signal molecule or the signal protein or signal peptide, then this SRP will bind itself to the SRP receptor. And as it is binding itself to the SRP receptor, it also brings the ribosome along with mRNA to this place, dragging it there. So now, by the help of this SRP and SRP, intera SRP receptor interaction, ribosome is in the place very close to the translocon. And now, as the ribosome start adding more and more amino acid sequences, as you can see here, it start adding and translating more and more amino acid sequences, it will start inserting itself inside the lumen of ER. So once this polypeptide chain is inserted inside the lumen 
after certain amount of amino acid sequence which is inserted that signal peptide is cleaved by a signal peptidase that is found in the inner side of the endoplasmic reticulum membrane okay in the lumen side of the ER membrane so that is done here it is cleaved so now after this cleavage the whole protein is made and it is being injected inside the ER lumen so that process is unique in eukaryote that is called the co-translational translocation co-translational means it is going along with the translation process which is called translocation because it is the translocation of peptide from the cytosol inside the ER lumen right so that is unique feature in eukaryotes you will not find it in prokaryotes and for the convenience this image is taken from the cell fourth, edi fourth edition and copyrighted uh, in 2006 okay so that is the actual copyright I don't want this uh, image actually now uh, another important feature for the eukaryotic uh, translation elongation and after the translation actually mainly that is a post translational modification so once this protein is produced it is inserted inside the ER lumen after that this protein should be modified and this protein can be modified in many different ways we can add different receptors different different kinds of uh, say methyl groups or ethyl groups uh, let's say glycosylation and many different chemical modification can take place now these modifications are important for example say if we have a glycosylation modification that protein should be delivered outside the cell or let's say if it is having a particular signal of six, nu six amino acid sequence which is very much conserved then that protein will be delivered to the mitochondria so those signals that are present in the protein in form of amino acid sequence or by any means of chemical modification will target that protein in different regions of the eukaryotic cells and that's very very important for example you can see it here that we have this isoprenoid ring that is formed that is modified remember so if you have this isoprenoid ring it has a different fate if it is have a dolicol phosphate different kind of chain arrangement as you can see it here it definitely destined the cell membrane then so this kind of modification will tell the cell to take action that from where actually they need to deliver it and these modifications may mostly take takes place in the Golgi apparatus if you remember in the Golgi because Golgi is actually the chemical sorting region of, of, of the cell so it sorts everything out and then finally delivers uh, those cargo in different places by the formation of vesicle and we call it a vesicle trafficking system or the cell membrane trafficking or cellular trafficking system you can also watch a video on cellular trafficking in my channel uh, for getting more understanding about this concept